consideration of personal protective equipment begins long before you approach the job task. It begins with the hazard assessment. Once the hazards and risks have been determined, your supervisor will implement the necessary hazard controls to eliminate or reduce the risk of injury to the workers involved in the job task. However, even the strictest controls will not necessarily eliminate all the risks associated with most job tasks, and this is where the need for personal protective equipment, or PPE, must be evaluated. PPE, both basic and specialized, is always considered to be the last line of defense between a hazard or hazards and the worker. All other attempts at controlling the hazard should be addressed first. The hazard assessment will determine which specialized PPE may be required, but in any case, the following basic PPE, as outlined in this DVD, must always be followed. This DVD is not intended as a detailed PPE resource, but rather as an overview of the various basic components of personal protective equipment. Always ask your supervisor if you are unsure of the PPE requirements. From the head down, the minimum PPE consists of a hard hat, eye and possibly face protection, hearing protection, gloves or hand protection, foot protection, with the addition of fall protection, respiratory protection, and high visibility clothing, some of which may require specialized training. However, even the strictest controls will not necessarily eliminate all the risks associated with most job tasks, and this is where the need for personal protective equipment or PPE must be evaluated. Hard hats come in a number of styles, but all essentially consist of the same components. The crown or shell is designed to withstand impact and penetration, protecting your skull and your brain. It is important that the suspension be attached to the crown correctly. The suspension and headband, along with the shell, helps to absorb, distribute, and or deflect the impact, and keeps the hard hat from being dislodged and falling off. On some sites, chin straps may be required. There are different grades of hard hats. Each hat is designed and tested to meet CSA and or ANSI requirements. Hard hat shells are designed to withstand various degrees of impact. There are two types of impact ratings. Type 1 is for standard impact. A new Type 2 has been developed, rated for side impact. Always check with your supervisor to see that your hard hat is appropriate for the task. Before each use, check the shell and suspension of headwear for any visual damage. Any head protection subjected to severe impact must be removed from service and disposed of properly. Hard hats should be properly stored. We often take for granted the precious organs that provide one of our most important senses, our eyes. And on a work site, there are many hazards that can severely damage or injure your eyes, possibly resulting in the loss of an eye or permanent blindness. A hazard assessment helps to identify the additional type of eye protection that may be required. To be effective, eye protection must be properly selected and fitted. Regular prescription glasses are not enough protection on a work site. You must wear properly designed safety glasses over them. As an alternative, prescription lens inserts are available. Ask your supervisor. Safety eyewear must meet the CSA Z94.3 standard for impact resistance. All safety eyewear must be marked with the identification symbol. Safety eyewear must have side protection. The use of contact lenses is not recommended. Check with your supervisor. Choose appropriate lenses as needed for your job task. As a rule, dark lenses are not appropriate for inside work. Different types of goggles may be necessary depending on the hazards. When completing your hazard assessment, depending on the hazards involved, you may be required to wear a face shield in addition to your safety eyewear. 
Face shields provide extra protection from flying particles and sprays of hazardous liquids to the eyes, forehead, cheeks, nose, mouth, and chin, and where required, to the front of the neck. Ensure you attach and remove your face shield properly from your hard hat. Be sure it fits. Choose appropriate protective eyewear that fits firmly but not tightly and that sits as close to the eyes as possible without the eyelashes hitting the lenses. A good rule of thumb is that it should be difficult to stick your finger in between your face and the glasses. Also, some safety glasses have adjustable arms. Always make the adjustments to ensure a proper fit. Maintain it properly. Check equipment before each use. Clean dirty lenses and frames. Repair or replace lenses that are scratched, cracked, pitted, faded, etc. Store equipment in a safe place to prevent damage. Do not alter or modify equipment. Wear it. The best safety equipment in the world is no good unless you use it. Remember, it only takes a single act of carelessness to destroy your eyes forever. That is too great a risk to take with something as precious as your sight. Extended exposures to high noise levels, both occupational and recreational, presents a hazard to hearing and can even result in irreversible hearing damage. Use hearing protection devices when engineering or administrative controls are not practical or fail to reduce noise exposure to acceptable levels. Protection must be worn when noise levels exceed 85 decibels. The rule of thumb is if you have to yell or can't hear the person talking, it's over 85 decibels. There are several types of hearing protectors and many variations within each type. Pre-molded earplugs, formable earplugs, disposable earplugs, custom molded earplugs, semi-insert earplugs. Selection of the appropriate hearing protection device results from a careful study of the workplace and or hazard assessment as well as noise exposure levels. The most commonly used hearing protection devices are earplugs and ear muffs. Where exposure levels exceed 105 decibels, double or dual protection, like earplugs in combination with ear muffs, must be used. Audio earplug devices do not constitute hearing protection. When wearing hearing protection, one may feel isolated, use hand signals or other methods to communicate. Sounds may also be fainter and distorted and or muffled. Speech, noise from a machine, warning sounds, and other sounds may appear altered. Alarms, warnings, or call signals in a noisy environment may not be as audible. Be aware of your surroundings. Stay proactive in choosing correct hearing protection. A hearing protection device must make a tight seal within the ear canal or against the side of the head. Earplugs or earmuffs that don't fit properly or become dislodged will lose some or all of their noise protection capability. Earplugs must fit snugly and should not cause prolonged discomfort, which could be caused by an improper fit. Remove and try replacing with another set. If it continues, notify your supervisor. All hearing protection should be inspected before each use. Discard and replace dirty or defective devices. Gloves are intended to protect your hands from a wide variety of hazards. Gloves must be checked regularly and replaced if cuts or holes are detected. Some sites have adopted a 100% glove use policy. Gloves are task specific. Check with your supervisor. Leather work gloves protect you from abrasions and temperature extremes. Cut resistant gloves protect you from potential cutting hazards as they are cut resistant but not puncture resistant. Natural rubber, neoprene, and nitrile rubber gloves offer protection from chemical hazards. Refer to the material safety data sheets. Keep in mind that most harmful chemical exposure comes through hand contact when pouring or handling the chemical. Voltage rated gloves are used for high voltage electrical work. The integrity of the gloves is tested through air pressure before each use. Check with your supervisor regarding voltage rating and inspection criteria. 
For some tasks, it may be necessary to remove any hand jewelry, such as rings and or bracelets. Make certain you are wearing the proper hand protection for the job task. If unsure, ask your supervisor. There are many specialty gloves available, such as pinch protection gloves. And remember, gloves come in many sizes for both men and women. CSA approved safety boots or shoes must be worn if a hazard to the feet exists. The type and the height of footwear may vary from site to site. The CSA green triangle indicates sole puncture protection with a grade one protective toe. Lace them up to the top and tight enough to ensure a snug fit to minimize the potential for tripping. To reduce the risk of slipping, always make certain the soles of your boots are not worn and appropriate for weather conditions. Like a good set of tires, your boots need tread to give you grip. When selecting your footwear, ask yourself, are these comfortable enough to walk in all day? Do my feet slip as I walk in them? Are they light enough to wear all day? Do they provide enough ankle support? Try on various styles to compare the differences in fit and determine the most comfortable for your feet. Remember, unlike regular boots or shoes, they will not stretch out to fit. Check protective footwear before and after each use. If there are any cracks in the soles, worn treads, breaks in the leather, exposed toe caps, or similar damage that reduces the protective qualities of the footwear, the footwear should be replaced. Depending on the worksite hazards, you may be required to wear limb and body protection. If there is a danger to hand, arm, leg, torso, or skin, it's the employer's responsibility to ensure the worker wears properly fitted hand, arm, leg, or body protective equipment that is appropriate to the work, the worksite, and the hazards involved. Workers must ensure that the clothing worn underneath flame-resistant outerwear and against their skin is made of fire-resistant fabrics or natural fibers that will not melt when exposed to heat. Check with your supervisor about the requirements for wearing hoodies on your site. It is also the employee's responsibility to use and wear proper body and limb protection. And further, if you are working with chainsaws or cutting devices out in the open, you will require cut-resistant leggings and torso protection. Protect your knees from injury as required. The proper selection, maintenance and use of PPE is critical to your job site safety. Your hazard assessment will determine your PPE. Keep in mind that with all PPE, there is generally a level of discomfort and inconvenience that accompanies the equipment. However, the more you wear the protection, the more comfortable it will become. Give yourself time to adapt and remember these points. Make certain your PPE fits properly. Poor fitting protection can create its own hazards. You must wear clothing that fits close to the body. No bracelets, rings, dangling neckwear, wristwatches or similar articles. Head and facial hair must be short and confined to prevent getting snagged or caught in tools, equipment, or machinery. Always check and maintain your PPE so that it can function as intended. And last but not least, PPE will only protect you if you wear it. The hasty decision to just do this one little two-minute job without the correct PPE may cause you to lose an eye, break a limb, severely cut yourself, or worse yet, cause your accidental death. Don't become complacent about PPE. It is the last line of defense between you and a hazard. <laughs>